Hey everybody, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. We have updates. Uh, Noah actually put it as a 2 p.m. update. There's a new disturbance in the Western Caribbean. It has 20% chance already of cyclone formation. Uh, it's extending from the southwestern to the northwestern Caribbean Sea. It's producing a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Uh, any development of this system is expected to be slow over the next several days as the system passes near western or central Cuba, the Florida Straits, and the Bahamas. So no matter what the development is, it is going to be locally heavy rainfall. And it will be possible for the areas in South Florida at times through the weekend. So keep your mind on that, and we will keep up to date with that. Uh, as of now, Hurricane Epsilon is at 110. is literally one mile per hour away from being a Cat 3, and I'm showing it will be a Cat 3. I'll, I'll show you what happened with the dry air. Now, here's the four uh, ensembles that we can see for the guidance. Now, first of all, they have the 18Z. It goes up to the 26, and it does show some low pressures roundabout. You can see a little bit of everywhere, but nothing doing serious intensities. The minimum would be the blue going towards the green. That's like 40. That's on the edge of tropical uh, storm strength right there. Now, if you move and you look at the, the rainfall amounts, and I'm going to show you the other ones in just a second. Now, the guidance from NOAA is showing that the rainfall amounts is going to be in this way. And GFS is showing this, but Euro is showing that way with the rainfall. So we're going to go uh, by Euro as far as the rainfall amounts. But if, what could happen in the next five days, I mean, if you look, the, the uh, intensities are a little different. Like, we do show uh, some low pressures going across the Caribbean, and there is going to be heavy rainfall amounts. But it looks like after the five days is where the most of it will come in, according to the GFS so far. Because we did see a low pressure go into towards Mexico City across the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, they're predicted to get over 10 inches of rain just right there alone, or well, 13 right there, within the next 10 days. Uh, Guatemala, Guatemala City, you get over 4 inches. Uh, Honduras, you're getting 6 inches. Nicaragua, you're getting 5 inches. Uh, Costa Rica over seven inches and Panama you're going to get uh, over five inches and the heaviest rainfall is on western cute Columbia which is going to be getting uh, 13 I think it was 13 inches 13 to 15 inches so that that's going to vary as it moves across now if we go to the euro and see the difference that you get with the the, the rain in the next three days Okay, you see how it's very low. Miami, you're going to get over two inches according to the euro. And the reason why we're using euro, euro is better close range. Uh, GFS picks things up long range, but euro has been more accurate when it comes to close range. And it's showing the same impact area that NOAA showed for the watch area. And, and GFS wasn't showing that. GFS was just showing it was on western uh, Jamaica over by Cuba. But after the next three days is when the heaviest rainfall starts to come in. You get over three inches in Miami. Uh, the Bahamas, you're going to be getting rainfall. Uh, let's see, Congo Town, Marsh Harbor, Freeport can even get some heavy rainfall, but over three inches just for Congo Town. And then over here towards Trinidad, they're going to be getting some heavy rainfall, four inches of rain as well. Now, when you go towards West End and Georgetown, they're going to be getting five inches, four inches for Georgetown. Jamaica, you're a little over an inch, a little over two inches. But after the next up to 10 days is when the heaviest will move in. And you'll be over four inches on the eastern of Jamaica, and then it slowly goes towards two inches to less than two inches as you go west. But west end, you're still on five inches. You look like yours is going to be within the first five days. It's going to be the heaviest of the rainfall. But the full ten days is when the heaviest is going to be for everybody in this area. Now, according to the euro, and the euro is not showing what the GFS showed as far as the heavy rainfall going into Mexico. So keep that in mind, uh, Mexico, please. They also show on lighter impacts as far as Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. All this region here is showing lighter impacts except Costa Rica. You still get over five inches according to both of them. Uh, matter of fact, the GFS shows heavier, almost eight inches. But still, you're, you're going to be heavy on the west side of Colombia. It's over six and seven inches on all the, the nearby uh, towns. Also, you got uh, Port of uh, Spain. Uh, GFS shows it's going to be heavier for you over there. It shows over five inches plus all the, all the islands. So be aware of that, please. Uh, Puerto Rico, over three inches, according to the, the GFS. But the euro is the one that shows that your worst of it is going to be after, uh, after the 10 days. Because if you look at the GFS and go to the five days, 
Puerto Rico don't have a whole bunch, neither does the islands. But after the five days, so from five to ten, is when something's going to be moving in. And you can kind of see, there's going to be a lot of low pressures tracking through. Now, when we go to the uh, 6Z, this one goes all the way to the 27th. It does show potential for some tropical storms that could be popping up uh, eastern Florida, western Bahamas. And again, that's the beginning of it, just to 40 miles an hour. I don't see any greens. That gets up to 50. So it's, it will be a weak system as it goes by. Uh, the 12Z is up to the 30th uh, of this month. And it does also show a tropical storm. Uh, eastern Bahamas at wet weekends, another chance for one uh, central Bahamas and northern Bahamas. But it also shows a lot of these are going to go uh, north through through Cuba and then go western through the Gulf and die down. Maybe a low pressure towards Monterey, uh, Mexico. So be aware of that. And maybe a couple possibilities for tropical storm. And even this one coming all the way through to the Pacific and going all the way to 50 miles an hour. So that's a possibility as well. And then when you go to the uh, the zero Z, which goes all the way to the 31st, it shows a lot of low pressures tracking around, uh, a couple possibility of tropical storms over here in the Bahamas, but it's not showing a lot of activity. And the reason is because there's a lot of movement going on, and you really can't pinpoint what's going to be where at this moment. I'll show you that in a second. Now, if you look here, this is Hurricane Epsilon. You'll see how it started tracking today, and the dry air wanted to to go well this is yesterday and today the dry air was about to go through it and go, wrap all the way around and it could have choked off from all these storms so it could have weakened it was on a weakening trend uh, but now the dry air is, go, is headed northward and it has a full circulation of thunderstorms and it's not going away the dry air didn't get in as much you can see a little bit of the yellow in right there that's what that weakening was earlier but it looks like the storm uh, push that, pushes that out and it actually forms back up. I'm showing it actually go to a Cat 3 uh, with my WSV3. I'll, I'll show you that as well. Now, if you look at the storm over here on the, on the eastern side, over here coming off of Africa, this is the one that we was watching that it was showing before. It was a possibility that it could get over uh, towards uh, Venezuela and get it into the Caribbean. But as you see, the, the wind shear that's coming off uh, of Venezuela that it, it's not doing much it has a lot to fight with and I can show you the fight that it, it goes through now if you see right here these lines coming off this is your wind shear that's coming off it's different direction than the clouds below and it's shearing off uh, this storm very quickly matter of fact if you look right when this wind shear here meets up with the top of the storm it just cuts it and tears that whole piece right off of it. So it's very much weakening this storm very quickly. And then the, the dark uh, storms that you see building and brewing in the, in the end shots right here, these go away quickly as well because it hits the wind shear uh, coming off towards the islands over there and it just it can't put up with it. Look at it, it weakened quick. So whether that makes it all the way into the Caribbean, uh, it's not looking good. If anything, it'll be like a little low pressure floating and maybe it'll get rotation later. But if you go to GFS and you look just 42 hours away, you'll see there is still low pressure systems moving uh, all through the Caribbean. It's still a hot time right now for for uh, activity. So it just needs a little bit of help and we could have problems. This one almost forms to a, a good low pressure starting moving. But again, we have cold uh, air coming along with the cold fronts and it knocks it down. It starts building up a little bit, and then it goes back down. But you can see other low pressures moving across as well, and they're all southern uh, flows. Now, if you look right here on the 162-hour, when you get towards Mexico and Mexico City, you start getting these light, uh, these very close uh, isobars. Now, the closer the lines, it means it's stronger the winds. So something is starting to build up over there in that corner. And then as you go through the days, you can see the storms build up with it as well. You can see a low pressure in the circle try and form. Uh, then it gets formed right there on the 186th day, which is the 20, 186 hours, uh, the 29th. And that's the one that we saw from Mexico, uh, from Mexico City. That's why we saw a bunch of heavy rainfall in the area. So even though the Euro didn't pick that up, that is still showing a continual trend that's been going on for a couple of days now. Now you'll see also storms passing through towards Jamaica. So we have a couple swaths that we'll be passing through within these next couple of weeks that we got to keep our eyes on. Uh, they can easily turn into a system that the area is very uh, ready for, for conducive activity. All it needs is a little help. Now, if you go to the 30th, 
you'll notice that the, the after the five days is when the east side of the Caribbean starts getting more rainfall and they start getting their problems. That's because these low pressures start to finally start making it across because it's taking them a while to get past all that wind shear. But I do show that the systems do make it across. They are weak. They're below 1,013. That's why the, the guidance system can, can pick it up because that's, that's the lowest that you can put for a pressure before it becomes a problem. That's equal pressure for the for the sea level out there is 1,013. But you can see that a couple of them get through and they get a little bit stronger, nothing major, just 1,007. But they do make it in the Caribbean. So we will have to deal with these things passing through. At least they're not coming in strong and already causing problems for Puerto Rico and everybody else in this area. Now, if you notice, when you get to the end of the month, well, the beginning of the next month, because we're already on the 21st, that we started getting a possibility of a low pressure system forming right off the east coast of Florida. And you'll see it sticks around for a minute while you're still getting storms coming in towards the Caribbean. Then you see the isobars. That's, means, that's indicative of some very strong winds. Now, if you notice, this is the same shot. This is on the 4th. Uh, you, there's a storm that's passing through right over the north. And that's why this don't go nowhere because the, the dominant high pressure traps it down below. And then it starts dipping into a, a sharp ridge, and this sharp ridge will pull this storm up uh, later after that. So it will make a northern track after that, and it is showing that it's still weak. I mean, even though it gets down to 1,005 in our last shot, but it's still showing weak. But these are some strong winds as it goes. So you might get some winds off the east coast on that. Uh, now, when I went to Tropical Tidbits, and you look up uh, GFS Para, it does pick up that we do have a little low pressure that does make it in. Around the 28th, right by the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, it actually forms good on the 27th, but you don't show below there. But it actually, but it shows that it gets whopped, and you'll see what I mean. It gets down to 1,007, and this is the one that's supposed to be going towards Mexico, uh, Mexico City. And then you'll see the winds moving. The, the winds that was moving in was actually the cold front, and it whops it really good, and it sends it back down, and it turns into nothing. And once again, we see the low pressure pick up on the east side. Of Florida as it moves away and that's what we got so far from that model now if you look at the euro and you go and look up the, the surface low pressure you can see why the area is very indicative for low pressure formations and you can even watch how it almost goes away but it stretches out to a big large piece because there's more low pressures moving in with it then it actually stretches towards the area that NOAA uh, that National Hurricane Center is talking about in this region that it could possibly move to but I'm showing that, that that chance is very slim, it's very slight, and it will miss this window of opportunity. I think I think it's going to be some small storms we're going to be dealing with, guys. Now, this is all the way 24 hours away. Now, if you look right here, this is Bermuda, all right? And you got you got Hurricane Epsilon passing by, and they, they want to know how bad is it going to be for them. Well, if you look on the GFS, and I'll show you multiples, uh, that I'm showing that you're well on the west side of this hurricane, and at at best 30 miles per hour winds that's that's what i that's what i'm showing so far now as we move through you'll notice that it does go down in pressure it does gain more strength that's because that dry air stopped wrapping in you only only a little bit got in and it cut the rest off but you're way over here bermuda way on the outside of it as it goes by you and goes away now, if you look on the, the winds, you'll see that right now you're getting 29 to 30 knot winds. Uh, that's pretty strong winds, but it's not the hurricane winds that you're getting for, off the hurricane. But as you move by, this is 24 hours away. This is 30 hours away. It stays uh, 26, 25 knots. It actually gets a little spot of weakness. Then it should get strong again right there. It'll get back to 29 knots again. You're not even in the red. So you're not, you're not going to be nowhere as near really bad uh, winds according to the gfs model uh, it's shown it, it misses you by a good bit as it goes away and then if you look up the euro the euro also shows that you're way on the west side of this hurricane as it passes by so i'm thinking you're going to get minimum probably 50 miles an hour winds uh, off this storm and if you look at a gefs it also shows you're going to get about 28 knot winds as the system moves by so I really think you're going to be okay with this, uh, Bermuda. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a major problem. 
Now, WSV3, as you can see, it picks it up 955 millibars. It shows max winds of 114 miles an hour. It shows it actually is a Cat 3 at this moment. It's just no, it didn't update yet, but they will. But it has the potential to get up to 119 miles per hour still. Then it's going to go even higher. Well, I'm sorry. That's, that's what that 119 was. Then it's going to go back down to a 114. Then it's going to go back down to a Cat 2 of 108 and slowly go down and down. But it is already what I'm showing, already a Cat 3, and they should be updating their information shortly. So let me show you the run that you get from this so you can see any impacts. Uh, also, real quick, I want to show you Mexico. This is 10-meter winds. Uh, so this shows the impact winds, and the white is tropical storm, tropical depression strength in the 30s. Uh, when You can see the color chart on the top of the legend. The hurricanes will be like yellows towards the greens. But the winds, when the cold front comes through, the winds knock, and I'll show you that the system still sh does show a little intensity uh, for y'all. And when it goes through, it comes out the other side uh, because it's such a later in the model. Those are actually 50 miles an hour winds right there, almost 50, 48. And it forms up into a possible uh, tropical cyclone slash hurricane. And what it does after that, we, we really don't know because it's still kind of far away, but that's already... Uh, hurricane strength 85 uh, for you right there so just be aware of that okay so we just got to keep that in mind now on a quick note i, I appreciate y'all y'all been helping i've been noticing and then it looks that y'all y'all been liking and sharing and you don't know how much that means to me it means almost everything to me it, it shows me that you appreciate this and so i appreciate you for that so god bless every single one of you i appreciate y'all for watching my videos and i, I really hope y'all stay safe i'd like to praise god with a little psalm 122 i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord our feet shall stand within thy gates o jerusalem jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set th thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy, thy walls, and prosperity within thy, thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. Y'all have a great day, guys. I don't see anything coming out of these low pressures or this, this uh, NHC warning so far. I will stay up to date on it, but as of right now, I just see a lot of heavy rainfall and some storms. So we will stay on top of that, all right? God bless all of you. Y'all have a great day. All glory goes to God. Amen.